Unity CEO retires. Myth of Empires 2 will be re-released in early 2024. And Ubisoft has delayed X Defiant again. And more in today's video. What is going on guys? Welcome back to Copy News. I hope you're well on this fine Wednesday. And let's get into today's story, shall we? Our first story comes from Eurogamer and is titled Unity CEO John Ristitiello retiring from company weeks after price and controversy and I am not surprised that this has happened. Just weeks after Unity faced backlash for unpopular changes to its engine pricing model, the company has announced the departure of its CEO John Ristitiello. Last month Unity revealed significant changes to its Unity Engine business model, which included additional monthly Unity runtime fees for developers after certain revenue and lifetime installment thresholds. This decision triggered immediate and intense criticism for, from the development community. And obviously those per install fees, that was really what did it. That was really the thing that triggered people the most. If they wanted to change their revenue split and get more revenue or something, I don't think people would have cared as much. But it was the fact that they wanted to do these install fees and retroactively, you know, implement them, which people had a problem with. Unity eventually made revisions to its initial price plans, but the damage already been done. In response to controversy, John Ricciello, who oversaw these pricing changes, is retiring from all his roles at the company effective immediately. This includes his positions as president, chief executive officer, chairman, and board member. Bear in mind, he's also, you know, he's stepping down and doing this after he sold all his shares, which he did before he announced the pricing changes. Just to put this in perspective, UT has not explicitly mentioned the recent pricing troubles in Ristiello's departure announcement. Instead, the company has stated that they will initiate a comprehensive search process to find a new CEO. In the interim, James M. Whitehurst will assume the role of Chief Executive Officer, President and Board Member. Ristiello will continue to advise the company to ensure a smooth transition. And if I was the company, I'd just ignore his advice. It would do them better in the long run. In his departure statement, Ristiello expressed gratitude for the opportunity to lead Unity for nearly a decade and acknowledged the contributions of the company's employees, customers, developers and partners. John Ristiello joined Unity in 2014, having previously served as CEO, CEO at EA. During his time at Unity, he faced several controversies, including a public apology for calling mobile game developers some of the biggest effing idiots for not prioritising monetization in smartphone games. In other words, for not implementing Unity's terrible monetization systems, which are just awful for consumers. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this one down below. I am not going to be disappointed over this one. He has made more than enough money. He will be fine. He's a, he's a very wealthy man, right? This, this isn't like staff getting laid off. This is someone who has a lot of money and totally made terrible decisions and it was only inevitable that this conclusion would happen at some point but let me know what you guys think about this hopefully this means a step forward in unity and um, direction and they will actually start doing good things instead of crazy decisions like this you know crazy decisions like per install fee our next story comes from wccf tech and is titled Myth of Empires to be re-re-released. In early 2024, as Snail Games becomes its publisher following a legal dispute. This is an interesting one. So after a hiatus, Myth of Empires is set to make a return to Steam in early 2024, bringing with it an unexpected turn of events. The multiplayer war sandbox game initially launched on Steam Early Access in late 2021, and it gained popularity with its tactical combat, base building, NPC recruitment, horse taming, guild system, and a bunch of other stuff, as well as support for DLSS and ray tracing. But with all that in mind, just after a month into its launch, sorry, less than a month after its launch, Steam unexpectedly removed the game due to a copyright claim filed by Snail Games. Developer Angler Games, oh, that's meant to be Angler or Angela Games promised to vigorously defend the game's availability on Steam, but faced challenges. After nearly two years of legal disputes, a unique settlement offer agreement has been reached between Snail Games and Angela Game. Angela Game's president, Yi Ling Zheng, released a statement acknowledging the difficulties faced by Snail Games 
Ch I do read that correctly. Acknowledging the difficulties faced by Snail Games due to a dispute and expressing a desire to move forward through a business partnership. As a result of this settlement, Myth of Empires is set to return to PC distribution platforms, including Steam, in early 2024, with Snail Games taking on the role of publisher. The game will also see a global launch on PlayStation and Xbox consoles, scheduled for early next year, with Snail Games providing support for PR and marketing. Additionally, players can anticipate a steady cadence of expansion packs and DLCs for Myth of Empires in the future. So the game's coming back and you'll be able to play it and it will be back on Steam, back on all the platforms and stuff. So hopefully this is a good thing. It's just such a weird one. Like, I should really look into that. I might make a separate video on what, what happened with this at some point because it's so weird for a game to be taken off Steam because of like a copyright dispute issue. Especially because you you just wouldn't expect a game to get put on Steam by say a developer if another entity like there's a publisher involved or something right <sighs> weird one but let me know what you guys think down below and our next story comes from Eurogamer Ubisoft delays free to play a shooter X Divine again <sighs> and no I don't mean the last delay I mean that is actually now another delay <laughs> okay so, Ubisoft just once again to postpone the release of its upcoming free to play shooter X Defiant, citing inconsistencies in the game experience. These issues became apparent during a public test session that took place on the 28th of September. In a statement, Ubisoft announced the delay of the pre season of X Defiant to address the issues discovered during the public test session. Executive producer Mark Rubin provided more insight into the problems, mentioning feedback received during the test session about the game's movement feeling off, which was attributed to frame spikes. While Ubisoft has not provided any updated release window for X Defiant, the company stated that it will share more information about preseason and testing as it comes. Originally, X Defiant had a tentative release window, wi window for the summer of this year, but it was postponed to a likely October release due to console certification issues, and now there is no confirmed release date for the game, so yeah, that one, uh... It's, it's not going well for X Defiant, so it's coming out sometime, one day, somewhere, in the future. And you'll just have to wait and see what it happens. It's such a weird one. This game's had so much trouble. The console certification test, that's the one that got me. How do you mess them up? Because honestly, there is some terrible games on PlayStation and Xbox that have been made by, like, the worst, worst developers that have passed these certification tests and got on the platform. Yet, X Defiant was apparently so bad it couldn't even pass the test. So, yeah. Let me know what you think down below, guys. And our next story comes from Engadget. And it's about a new law passed in California that makes it easier for consumers to request the deletion of their data. On October, October 10th, Governor Gavin Newsom signed SB362, known as the Delete Act, into law making California the first state to streamline personal data removal. The law requires the California Privacy Protection Agency to create a tool that allows state residents to request the deletion of their data from nearly 500 registered data brokers in California. Advocates of the bill view it as an essential protection. Senator Josh Becker, the bill's author, highlighted that data brokers have extensive data on individuals and currently sell sensitive information to the highest bidder, including reproductive health care, geolocation and purchasing data. And the Delete Act is aimed, you know, to safeguard this sensitive data and stop these brokers being able to sell it. Under the current privacy laws, Californians can request data deletion, but they must contact each company individually and such requests can be denied. The, CPP the CPPA has until 2026 to develop the necessary system and can charge brokers for its use. According to the Delete Act, each broker is required to register with the CPPA and must fulfill deletion requests every 45 days or face potential penalties and fines. Third party compliance audits are scheduled to begin in 2028 and continue every three years. And this got apparently pushed back from people, from organisations like the Association of National Advertisers, right? <laughs> Which is expected because obviously advertisers, they want your data so they can sell you more stuff. But they went about it in such a weird way. 
They expressed concerns about schemes that charge customers exorbitant amount of fees to delete their data, which if I read this right and I'm understanding this right, yeah. So I did read this right. They're going to charge brokers. So I don't understand how there's this argument from, you know, the Association of National Advertisers. Oh, oh well, there's, there's going to be these exorbitant amounts to delete their data. No, dude. You, it's the brokers that are paying this. It ain't the people who want their data gone. They just have to put the request in. It's you guys that have got to delete it. It's you guys that have got to pay to be in this system. And this is how it should be. So they're making fortunes off people's data. They also raise concerns about small businesses and non-profits struggling to reach their target audience without access to this detailed information. And that is like the latch, last ditch effort of trying to say, but what about, what about, what about these people who, who really in need? No, small businesses will be fine. People will find small businesses, right? I, I've never, ever, ever seen an ad targeted at me for a small business business or website or something it's always the big ones it's always the massive names because they're the ones that pay the most they're the ones whose ads get pushed the most and it's the same with non-profits i've never really seen non-profits have a lot of ad time except maybe like on tv and stuff <laughs> so, i don't even think yeah i don't think i've seen any ads anywhere else for non-profits really most people seek out non-profits themselves or it's heard of by word of mouth or from charity streams or, you know, fundraising events on social media and stuff. It's done that way. I don't, I don't see how ads are going to affect this at all. They don't need to, like, call, call people and spam people for this. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this new law down below. Personally, I think this is a step in the right direction and everywhere should adopt this, not just California, but everywhere should have a law where if you request that your data is deleted, it has to be deleted and they can't deny it. And our last story comes from Tom's Hardware. It's about AMD's recent acquisition of open source AI software company Nod AI, which they have acquired to strengthen their open source AI capabilities. So AMD has officially announced the acquisition of Nod AI, a company specializing in open source AI software. Nod AI, founded in 2013, has developed a robust ecosystem of developer tools, libraries, and modules to facilitate the development of AI solutions for AMD Silicon, including Ryzen AI chips for consumers, PCs, Epic CPUs, Radeon GPUs, virtual processors for data centers. While Nod AI had recently been valued at 36.5 million, AMD hasn't said how much they acquired them for. AMD has a long lineup of Silicon for AI workloads. However, NVIDIA's CUDA system, I cannot. CUDA's everywhere, it's used in everything, and it's very, very popular. And that is kind of a problem, and I see why a lot of these companies are trying to do their own AI things, including AMD, but also Microsoft, OpenAI, everyone trying to develop their own AI chips and stuff to get away from using CUDA, because of... Because if you use CUDA, it's closed, right, and you have to use an NVIDIA product for it. Whereas AMD is being focused in on open source solutions like its Rock'em Radium Open Compute Programming Stack, which can be used on a lot of AMD hardware. And in theory, other vendors could use it as well, because it is open source, so it's not like it's locked just to AMD GPUs um, or CPUs that have, um, you know, the relevant AI accelerators and modules and stuff. Like, this could be adapted for a lot of things. To create a more cohesive software portfolio, AMD's reorganized its Rock'em development under Victor Peng, president of the Adaptive and Embedded Computing Group at AMD. Peng, previously the CEO of FPGA America, Xilinx, acquired by AMD for $35 billion in 2024. I had to double-check my notes then. $35 billion in 2022. Now oversees a unified programming model for all of AMD's compute solutions. Not AI's open source software aligns with AMD's open software strategy, with its short compiler based automation software accelerating the deployment of AI models on AMD's CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and more. And it's also cross platform, so it can be used on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, etc. Which means that this acquisition is good for AMD going forward. And this is kind of what AMD needs with their AI stuff is to make advancements and to make it easier for developers to use AMD hardware as 
an accelerator for, you know, anything that they want to do. And there is a statement from AMD which says, The acquisition of Node AI is expected to significantly enhance our ability to provide AI customers with open source software that allows them to easily deploy highly performant AI models tuned for AMD hardware, said Vamsi Bopana, Senior Vice President of the Artificial Intelligence Group at AMD. The addition of the talented Nod AI team accelerates our ability to advance open source compiler technology and enable portable, high performance AI solutions across the AMD product portfolio. And this follows AMD's recent purchase of Mipsology, an AI startup focused on inference. And yeah, we'll just have to see where this goes and what happens with it and stuff. But this is a good step forward for AMD with what they're doing with this. Let me know what you guys think down below about AMD acquiring this. Are you excited? I feel like if this means that in terms of development, people can start getting their AI models to work more easily, more faster, more reliably on AMD hardware and more efficiently as well, then this is good. Because the Rock'em stuff, it, it does work. It does do what it's advertised to do. It's just most people use CUDA because most people have an NVIDIA GPU. And this is what we talk about when we say, like, these companies, especially the major ones like Microsoft and stuff, um, are trying to push away from NVIDIA because they see where and how important this stuff is for the future. And if things stay the same, it will end up being a monopoly. It is kind of a monopoly now where NVIDIA is number one and everyone else is kind of stuck. So these changes are needed. And I hope to see more competition. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know down below what you thought about all of today's stories and stuff. And I'll see you guys later.